I would like to take back what I said in my previous video. I underestimated myself. I've said that I won't be able to reach uh, Guardian rank and World Arena. And I managed to prove myself wrong. I've reached Guardian 1 today. And uh, simply I was just farming points and didn't expect too much. And then BAM! My rank turned red. Got that red star and yeah. So exciting day. So I'm gonna be showcasing my team in a few minutes here. But first off, let's talk about the Hall of Hero anniversary that uh, it's gonna happen this weekend. I am very excited because there is um, there's a there, there's a lot of good options for this event. Um, the the regular element of wind, fire, and water. Um, they're ma mainly for skill ups, but the one I am very excited about is the Dark Death Knight. He is simply amazing. Um, so for you um, early game players and mid game players who wants uh, to move towards mid game and end game, this is the guy you need. Um, he is one of the best units for raids. And uh, because of his, because uh, because he has the whole package for raids. So the first skill, uh, for some um, rune rune builds, uh, revenge is best because he's mainly using. He only shines in raids. You can use him elsewhere in PvP, but raids is where he shines the most. He has a whole package. So let's look at his skills quick. First skill, uh, he has an HP block with 50% uh, chance. Second skill. Uh, attack twice, reducing attack power and defense with a 75% chance. And I think that increases to 100% once you max skill this. And damage increases uh, according to his HP. And so these are the two main uh, debuffs. The three main debuffs you need for raids and he has it. Uh, the HP block uh, is very essential for the last... Uh, I believe the last... About uh, one fourth or one third of the uh, raid bosses H uh, when and after his third uh, wave, yeah, this is uh, HP block is very essential because the boss moves really fast and defense break and attack break because um, you don't want him you want your frontliners not to die and you want defense break so your uh, damage dealers can actually do some damage and um, he has the res the resistance leader. So if you have this unit, you instantly have uh, resistance is key in raids, uh, especially because your damage dealers will have lower resistance, and you want all your support monsters ideally to have 100 resistance to try to block out uh, the speed block, especially. And if you have passive monsters like Diaz, you want it to block out the Oblivion because he has a damage reduction for the entire team. He also has a uh, reduced critical chance on him on him so he has a lot of survivability which makes him very very strong so for mid game and end game players this is the obvious choice DS um, but then if you already have DS totally go for the light self uh, because uh, that's also like a uh, light and dark lightning so you know, that's one monster's out of your collection that you don't need to worry about. Uh, but then the other three, if you really, really need a skill up and if you don't want to double mom them, then go for it. So, um, the list of priorities should be DS for progressing the game, um, a Light Sylph for collection, and third, uh, third uh, the rest for skill ups. So, I suggest you choose wisely and if you go with DS, you're never going to go wrong. You don't need to build them right away. But if you want to progress far in the game, DS is the perfect choice. Alright. Again, I would like to take back what I said in my uh, previous videos of uh, my first time reaching Conquer's rank in World Arena. I said that you know I wasn't going to reach Guardian rank. And today I proved myself wrong. 
and really I wasn't even trying. I figured that if you reach, uh, if you get uh, 1700 points for World Arena, you'll get Guardian rank. But you know, I didn't really care because, as you can see, I don't even have the points to buy the uh, the awesome um, the awesome wings. What's it called? The legendary gladiator. I don't have enough because uh, I think a few days ago. Uh, I, I finally got up to Conqueror's rank. Uh, last week I struggled entirely in Fighter's rank. I I even dropped uh, below 1400 points. I struggled so much. So then this week, uh, a few days ago, I finally reached Conqueror's rank and I just spent it all on the Gladiator of Ambition. So I have big regrets right now. My, I guess my new goal, since I uh, over overly achieved my uh, previous goal, I guess my, uh, my next goal is to get at least one legendary gladiator um, transmog because it looks really awesome. I mean, it doesn't really defer much. It has the uh, lightning, uh, lightning includes with the awesome wings. So getting one would be ideal, but if I don't get it, it's fine. But then now I know I can reach guardian rank with my units um yeah so that's this is very good news and a lot of my monsters they need some work they seriously need a lot of work uh but uh it really uh, but i've gotten this far so that means that uh, i'm doing something right and i'm gonna showcase my team here Alright, first off, let's talk about my support monsters I use in uh, World Arena. Uh, my main monsters I uh, use for support uh, are Olivia, Jason, Chloe, Delphoi, Raccoonie, uh, Amelia, the water uh, unicorn, and sometimes Eladriel, the wind uh, Ar uh, archangel. And um, the, my damage dealers, I mainly use Laika and Ciara. Then the others I also use uh, are uh, Theo, Theo, Lucian, um, Meho Wang, Fire Monkey King, and Tessa Rion. So those are uh, my uh, lineups I mainly use when I choose. My standard team is um, Olivia, Ciara, Laika, Chloe, and Delphoi. Before before I finish building Olivia, I've always uh, used uh, Chasun, uh, mainly because she's there to stall and for the attack buff. Uh, so Laika would benefit a lot, and Sierra would benefit a lot from that. So that's why I was using um, Chasun a lot. But uh, since I switched out to Olivia this past week, um, my my uh, team has been doing much much better. Especially uh, because of uh, Olivia's uh, research, it also cleanse. So, for instance, uh, they're always gonna target. For instance, Malika, they're always gonna target uh, Malika here um, because uh, he's the squishiest, and so then uh, and he has lower resistance, so he'll get stunned more often. So, with that research and cleanse at the same time, it allows Malika to move. He's also built uh, Will Vampire right now, and uh, that is the build uh, for World Arena. Um, Will is uh, not. Yeah, you can you can uh, live without Will. I before before I switched to this build, I had a tankier build. I was a Vampire Nemesis to uh, add more turns, especially if they do uh, max um, th like thirty five percent of Lyca's HP for his passive. Then he'll be able to move much quicker, but uh, fighting, uh, you know, like and you know how uh, higher uh, World Arena is already. You'll always, almost always, see a Barad. So having Will in there, uh, having Will in there uh, helps a ton, and you can also block out other moves. And if and uh, if your opponent has an AOE stripper, they will force. They are forced to strip your Laika if they want to defense or defense break him or um, uh, put Oblivion on him with Tessa. So they are forced to activate skills on uh, Laika uh, if they get the first turn. So once I switched out uh, to Olivia, 
uh, it gave uh, like uh, much much uh, it made him much much more scary because I can cleanse and make him move and then justice right away and if that doesn't do it and then uh, he can hit one more time with that monster and it will usually kill that monster so with uh, Olivia the the combo with Olivia it has helped a ton especially with the uh, like a team uh, I don't really have any um, uh, control AOE control monster like a Varan. I have Poseidon, but I don't have him skilled up, and he's uh, built with my slower uh, my slow will team uh, comp. So uh, my strategy is to uh, target the weakest monster, the one or the key monster they have, or the damage dealer, and take him out first. Because once you, know, you a lot of times once you take out the key monster, the opponent will likely uh, likely quit. Or they'll just try to stall it out, but if they can't get rid of yours, uh, your your damage dealer, then it's pretty much your game. So that's my strategy. That's how I got to guardian uh, guardian ranks here, and it seems to be working. All right. So for Leica, he's built uh, vampire will attack or damage attack. He has about, I think, 16, 17k HP. Um, he is... He can he can make some improvements. Um, my vampire runes aren't the best, but it works really well right now. Then for my Ciara, she is... She is uh, HP, attack, attack, violent focus. And then I'll also, uh, also uh, do the rune showcase at the end of the video as well. Uh, she's on a tanky build to survive those pernas because whenever you see when, whenever I put Ciara on Almost always they're gonna go for either Okeanos or Perna so With the very tanky uh, Ciara build even if you get hit with second skill from Perna You'll survive as long as Perna doesn't violent proc and just own you so the tanky build Ciara um, I believe after all the towers, my Ciara has over 29k HP, so close to 30k HP, so she is very, very stable right now. And for my lineup, um, for my standard team, um, they will almost always ban Ciara. Because uh, they know how good Ciara is. Uh, sh there's, uh, I don't think I have the video in anymore for the replay. But uh, one of the videos uh, and one of the matches, my Ciara went ham. She set pretty much uh, violent proc like crazy and set up bombs and pretty much took out the key, uh, took out pretty much two units at once. And then pretty much it was GG. So Ciara is a very, very strong and scary unit that um, if you have the chance uh, to get rid of her or to ban her, that is the, that is the choice you, ha you have to make. Because if she violent procs like crazy, she'll control everything and then pretty much you're screwed. So so Ciara, so my Ciara will almost always get banned from uh, from the banned phase. Alright, so let's move on to the um, replays. Uh, these are the last few replays before uh, I reach uh, Guardian, Guardian rank. Um, so I'll be so here. It will showcase my team. So I'm finding this comp here. Um, the biggest. Well, let's see here. I'm sorry. There you go. This is the first one. Uh, so I was finding this comp. I think something's up with the uh, with the uh, replay. But let's take a look. Yep, something's up with the replay. I'm, my, my team is actually on the left side. Uh, my opponent's team is on the right side because here, as you can see, here is my usual comp. Um, so for here, the biggest threat was, um, yep, in the ban phase, it was wrong as well. It was wrong as well. The biggest threat was the uh, the bulldozer because uh, he can pretty much uh, one shot my Delphoi or Olivia. So I, I I was forced to ban him. Rakan, I can survive because he doesn't have defense break, so I can survive. Um, so pretty much here, um, his uh, biggest, his biggest, 
downfall was okay his biggest downfall was that he had no strippers so he so he pretty much and he had no immunity so pretty much he allowed me uh, my Delphoi to pretty like Varad is the Varad is the only scary unit here I decided to take out Emma first because I understand that she has a high cooldown so she will likely be able to heal once only before I take her out so that's why I went for her and then the only other threat here is Varad so I have my Del so as long as my Delphoi can land that uh, that skill cooldown on him then it's set so see as you can see here um, Emma Emma really only had one heal in before she died because uh, Olivia gave uh, like more turns to take her out as well see as you can see here her research ant lens is really amazing because it allowed Dolf Dolfoy to wake up uh, Laika to uh, pretty much change the game so I think the um, the opponent here I think he was trying to go for more of a, a YOLO um, YOLO team because he had the bulldozer and the wind horus here but the thing is that I took out the bulldozer so it really uh, messed up his combo with it because yeah you always pair wind horus almost always pair it with uh, bulldozer so here um, yeah it's pretty much a GG because uh, and the other thing about my, my comp is I have a lot of wind monsters, so so they have a higher chance to survive a Varad and because they'll make him plants, especially if he does he's not uh, crit build, then he'll have a ch higher chance to plants and then his uh, AOE will pretty much just miss. So here, um, yeah, Malika just pretty much finishes it off so, uh, with uh, Laika. Uh, he can take out, see, as you can see here, I won, but yeah, it's flop. So I think something's up with the um, arena replay. Rakan is pretty much nothing compared, uh, nothing to Laika uh, for World Arena, especially. Uh, especially and plus if there's no uh, defense break. So Malika can take care of Rakan easily, even if he's on revenge. Um, Byland's a little iffy because he can proc a lot and uh, land dots. And as you can see, Malaika didn't really proc revenge much. I don't know. It just it's just Malaika, I think. So then we'll go to the next team here. Oh, we already did that one. All right. So again, everything is flopped. I'm supposed to be on the left side. The opponent is supposed to be on the right side. And the band phases, the band choice is wrong as well. But uh, you get the idea. All right. So let's see who gets banned. I forget who who was banned. All right. So I did ban the Hawthor. I banned the Hawthor because um, that was the. That was the unit that was pretty much gonna was gonna kill me. Plus my uh, plus Delphoi has a uh, high cooldown, so um, it's not good for it's, it's, yeah, it's not good to have uh, to fight Hawthor with a uh, high cooldown monster. So she was a must to get banned. So so I think that Perna yeah the Perna resisted uh, the cooldown reset. So the so the biggest threat here was the Perna. Yeah, that uh, dark uh, heart magician. The dark heart magician was very scary as well because uh, it almost allowed uh, Perna to kill my, uh, my Delphal. Yeah. So uh, and plus, I don't think you can resist it. So yeah, she was uh, very scary. But then, the, luckily, I set the bomb of Perna after uh, Perna violent proc. So I was able to uh, stop her violent proc. But yeah. Uh, so overall, here. The biggest threat was the um, Perna, but it was but it, yep, it'll be anybody game anybody's game here because uh, Camilla is notorious for proc like crazy, so she can proc like crazy and just pretty much murder my Ciara. But uh, luckily, I have the defense buff, so pretty much it cancels out the defense break from Orion. But yep, uh, it's pretty much a game here. So uh, I had everything under control as long as. One of my units did not get KO. Yeah, that was my first. This is actually my first time fighting a, a Dark Heart Magician. 
Um, in my opinion, uh, she's a little slow because I think she has high cooldown for her uh, third skill. But it is very scary though because it does allow. It, it's kind of like a, a water panda, almost the same thing. Uh, but the thing is, it doesn't KO you. Water Panda uh, has a high chance to KO any monster, especially if they're a damage dealer. Because they, they'll have less, they'll be less tanky. So yeah, that was uh, that was pretty scary. But my uh, Delphoi, she's pretty tanky. She's over a thousand, thousand events, so she survived the Perna. All right, so let's move on to the last video that pushed me to uh, G one here. All right. This one I know. This one I banned the Tiana because he had um, he had a lot of damage dealers and and banning is very very important for the um, world arena. You got to ban the right monster. Yeah, that the, you got to ban the wrong, right monster to ruin their they ruin, uh, ruin their combo. So yes, I had uh, the Sierra lead, not like the lead, but. Yeah, it's uh, something's glitchy about the world arena here. Yep, and then I chose the I chose uh, my water unicorn mainly because I I I was I was sure to set uh, to ban Tiana already. So with the water unicorn, I can uh, CC with it. I can provoke wh whichever monster I want with her second skill, and yep, uh, and her first skill as well. Uh, also freeze. So that's why I went with uh, the Water Unicorn, and plus she has really low cooldowns, because she has really low cooldowns, and plus she transforms, which reduces the cooldowns. So, yeah, so, uh, pretty much I had the game underway, plus Olivia was able to control that Theo, and that Theo didn't Vinyl Proc too, because uh, that would he, he would have been able to kill my Laika. So yeah, pretty much it's GG here, because I have the defense buff, and immunity. Uh, if Theo doesn't, if Theo doesn't violent probably like crazy, or if my Lega don't counter, then I would have lost. But yeah, it was uh, pretty much over with. Um, yeah, so uh, mainly uh, he didn't have enough damage because uh, uh, if he had the attack buff uh, at the get go, he would have KO'd uh, three of my units, and then, or at least two of my units, and then it would have been over. So that round, he just did not have enough damage to take me down. And plus, uh, the will runes. Will runes, will runes, will runes. They're the reasons, um, one of the main reasons why anybody will win. Because um, uh, if you go first and they have a will, you're, you're forced to get, up, get rid of your will if your monsters are faster. Yeah, so it really uh, screws up every, everybody's strategy. Yeah, will runes are the key, one of the key to World Arena. And then, all right, so then let's go talk about um, my strategy of uh, what uh, of each monster and the roles. So first off, uh, I wanted to talk about Olivia. So as everybody know, um, everybody got uh, most most of everybody got the idea of using Olivia from Syntec. Everybody know who Syntec is. He's the top player in uh, global server. So my uses of Olivia is sure the research and the cleanse, but beyond that, um, I mainly use her to CC monsters because she has the she has the uh, third skill that reduces up to fifty percent attack bar and, and uh, also uh, increase uh, defense for all allies. So it. Uh, provides more survivability, but then mainly I use her to control uh, Varans to counter Varans because if Varan has the glancing hit on him, then he will have less chance to land all his uh, CC with his both his both uh, both his second third skill. So he is she is my Varad counter. She is amazing. She has been countering Varad all week, and without her. I probably wouldn't get to where I am because everybody, like seriously, everybody has a Varad and I don't have one. And Varad was my worst opponent from the last World Arena season because I just couldn't counter it. But then now I learn, I adapt, and I know how to counter it. So Olivia is a great Varad counter. 
the second monster I want to uh, second monster uh, for my strategy Delphoi. She is amazing. As if you watched my pr uh, previous video, she was pretty much a staple in my arena uh, choices, my world arena uh, lineup. She was a staple because she is a Perna Theo. Uh, Water Fairy King and Varad counter because of her second skill. She will reset a Perna and then you can one-shot Perna. She can reset Theo, then you can one shot Theo. She can reset uh, Water Fairy King, uh, which because uh, most Water Fairy King aren't built tanky, so because they want him to die and come back and nuke, so you can one-shot him. And then um, so Monsters with passive Perna, Theo, and Water Fairy King and that survives and come back. Um, Delphoi is the answer to those. She is my answer, and she's been working great. As you saw in the you know that replay, uh, she missed the Perna, but if she was to get the Perna, um, that, that would have that would have just made everything easier. But then she missed with the second skill, so. And Varad as well, counter Varad, especially if you can, if you have her on Will, you can activate her third skill to get her uh, immunity up. And then if she it was able to Violent Proc or next turn, if, or the next turn she gets, she can reduce the Varad's cooldown to zero. And then makes, pretty much makes Varad useless for the next few turns. So she has a Perna, Theo, Water Fairy King, Varad counter. So that is why I use her. Because she is amazing and plus immunity. All right, and then the next monster, Chasun. We all know what Chasun is already. Right? Yeah, we all know how annoying she is and how good she is already. My purpose for her: attack buff. Uh, Lyca benefits from it. Uh, his counter will be stronger. His vampire uh, life drain will be stronger. Uh, more survivability. Um, and then Ciara, stronger bombs, more attack. Pretty much. Yep, she is what she is. And then uh, we're going to move on to uh, Raccoonie. I haven't been using Raccoonie much these past few days. Um, but then she, he, uh, he is MVP though. Uh, mainly because of his passive. He can remove and heal. The heal doesn't uh, do much. It's uh, pretty much like Molly. It doesn't do very much. But... Um, but the thing is that it can really hurt your opponent, especially if they overlook the skill. Because I think there, I had my one team, um, it was uh, Olivia, like uh, Raccoonie, and um, Orion. So I had that combo in where the, he kept focusing on my Laika that Raccoonie started healing. Uh, like his Laika will move, and the heal had more HP than the, the, my other monsters. Uh, then uh, Raccoon will start healing the other monsters, and then he'll attack Laika down more. And then, you know, he, then Laika will get back his HP back up, and he does an AOE. Everybody reduces. Then Raccoon will start healing other monsters on my side. So, um, the heal is pretty amazing, and it's really unexpected. But the removing harmful effects, uh, he removes stuns. So. You know your damage dealers are likely to go are gonna hit get hit first, so uh, he will get rid of those uh, harmful effects and allow the monster to move. And we all know that uh, his second skill, it's amazing. It's a research and increase uh, attack speed, so uh, it can allow a Perna to to hit any monster. Uh, or if there's defense break, you can allow a Perna to get an instant turn and instant kill with the second, that, that second skill. And then the first skill, additional plus attack bar. And uh, especially if it's uh, if your Raccoon is on violent, you will pretty much give your lowest attack, your slowest monster, 30% uh, attack bar. So that is pretty substantial and it adds up. And then. Uh, the last uh, strategy uh, support monster counter I have is the water unicorn Emilia a lot I think I think I won a lot of my matches because uh, people don't understand how uh, how good she is or don't know how to fight her 
uh, pretty much your first skill, 25% uh, chance uh, to freeze, and it goes all the way up to 50% uh, chance. But mine's at, uh, let's see, 40% chance to freeze right now. And she does uh, damage according to her max HP. Um, let's see, her crit, 19. She managed to crit a lot. I have no idea why. She's only 19%. She even crits on wind monsters like Ratish and uh, Chasun. I have no idea why. She's, yeah, but she crits a lot. And her stun is almost like a Monkey King. Any of the Monkey Kings. Uh, she stuns a lot. She freezes a lot. So I am very happy for that. And this is my monster of the month that I pulled. And then um, her second skill uh, controls a certain monster you want. Um, I mainly use her. Uh, I, I recently used her to control uh, Pernas. Uh, so they focus on her. And plus she has a stun and counter. So she's able to stun whoever attacks her but uh, mainly she is here to count us uh, she's my support monster to counter Varaz, Okeanos, Poseidon but especially Hathor I fought uh, I don't have the I think I think it was last night so uh, I fought a Hathor that pretty much was Hathor was useless because Emilia was uh, because of human form she, uh, her passive immune uh, in uh, human form, she was putting immunity up all day long, and even if she managed to put somebody to sleep, she had the cleanse. So I can cleanse that sleep and increase everybody's defense, and I can freeze what, uh, whatever units that uh, that's not under immunity or you know or any other damage dealers. But yes, she is my answer to Hawthor at the moment, and she is doing a very very amazing job. Especially if your opponents uh, do not have a stripper or a, uh, AOE stripper. So, she is very, very awesome. Alright, so other strategies. Uh, also understand, uh, once once you get more into the uh, World Arena uh, roster, by picking your roster, understand if your opponent is going to stall. Because if your opponent is going to stall, you would like, you would, uh, like a healer because they're going to choose all tanky monsters. Uh, I had a match where um, uh, it was pretty much a 4v1. Uh, his, all his support monster, it was uh, Chloe, Musa, and I forget the other two. Pretty much all support monster. Uh, uh, monster. They they knocked out all my monsters, except Malika. And Malika's in revenge. So I think it was like after 20% reduction HP and 20% up attack. I one-shotted his Chloe, and pretty much it was... Uh, it was three. It was three v one, and I won that one. So you gotta understand uh, if your opponent's gonna stall because you may need a healer or even a reviver. So, uh, so you gotta have to you're gonna you're gonna have to change your comp uh, depending on your opponent's strategy. And the only way to know that is to keep keep battling, winning, losing, whatever. All right, and then uh, my second strategy: kill the last tanky monster first. Or the damage dealers. Um, a great example is uh, Chloe. Chloe's a nat four. Uh, she doesn't have. Uh, I think I don't think she has amazing uh, raw stats. So if she's the nat four, uh, out of like the nat fives, uh, aim for her first. And like, for instance, if they had defense monster like Bell Jewel and uh, Varad, they're they're very 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 tanky. Uh, not HP wise, but defense uh, defensive wise. So. Chloe for sure will have more HP defense, so you can knock out Chloe first. And another good example uh, is uh, who to knock out first is Annabelle. Um, I was watching one of Syntax video. Uh, he learned that Annabelle needs to be uh, needs to have high attack, or her heal will pretty much become useless, especially early game. Uh, her heal gets stronger because it, her uh, everybody's attack increases. But if she doesn't even survive that long, then she, she, pretty much her heal and pretty much her support becomes useless other than her defense break. So I found out many strategy that if you are able to knock out Annabelle, their, their only healer and cleanser, then makes your life much, much easier. So Annabelle is also a really good unit to take out first because she relies on attack. But she also do a ton of damage, especially if she crits. So beware of that. But uh, tanky wise, aim for her. 
And then next, uh, choosing which monster to ban. Like uh, my my last replay, I had to ban the Tiana because uh, I had Will on my monsters, and I know for sure she's gonna use third skill. And then uh, uh, Zeros is gonna you know reset cooldown everybody, and then pretty much f me up. So knowing which monster to ban is key. And that's just going to take experience to understand. So pretty much uh, banning the monster that's going to disrupt their strategy and banning the one that would disrupt your strategy. So you got to weigh the two here. And then um, my last few points. Uh, caution. Um, I've been seeing a lot of Tianas that are damage build and even Tiana that are on despair. So, and uh, especially if they're running it with uh, Basset, uh, Water, Desert Queen, and uh, Orion or something that could AoE defense break, they could, uh, Tiana could pretty much KO any support monster and especially damage dealers because she is on damage build. And if she's on despair, that's that, that gets even more scary because her uh, second skill, AoE damage, and based on enemies' speed. So, be aware of that. Next monster to be aware of, Chi Wu. I've been seeing some uh, damage Chi Wu mainly because he's very fast, and uh, a lot of the opponents may, may think he's support tanky build. But this Chi Wu did like 12k on my Chasan because she was on defense break, so be aware of that as well. Because if it's on damage build, then that means that that mon that means that that Chi Wu is gonna be very squishy. So yes, be aware of that. And then overall, um, let's see. Overall, uh, the best way uh, to learn and about your strategy is to keep testing and losing, and winning, and uh, make sure you're able to counter a, a Varad combo. That is the key: countering a Varad combo. Because if you're able to do that, uh, you're able to progress. Uh, so, like, especially having Delphoi in the last Hall of Heroes, uh, it allowed me to, you know, max out her uh, second skill because I didn't have it maxed out. And uh, today, it turned out to be very useful. So, um, you know, uh, learning how to counter Varad uh, and uh, total CC combos because that's a lot of. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of high arena players, uh, world arena players, that's been focused on total uh, control um, over anything really. So that pretty much wraps up my video. And if you have any uh, more questions uh, or comments, uh, you know, leave leave it down below or you know, leave it on Reddit because I'm gonna post uh, this link on Reddit as well. And then you know we could just uh, discuss about you know strategies and builds and whatnot. So um, yeah, thanks for checking out my video today and subscribe for more content.